There we go. I got it. And let me cut it. So I'm going to do that in the water. Hey, I'm Professor Pollup and welcome to the Coral's Coral Channel. Hey everybody, this is Professor Pollup and today we're going to learn about fragging zoanthids. Zoanthids are one of the coolest corals because there's a ton of different types of them and they're actually pretty easy to frag. So we're going to go over a few simple steps on how to frag them and also I'll teach you how not to frag them so that you can have the most success. And today one of the polyps we're going to frag is a stratosphere zoa. Those are probably the most expensive polyp um, available right now and uh, they're really pretty and really cool so it's going to be a fun, uh, fun time fragging them. We're going to go over the supplies that we're going to use today to help us frag the zoas. So first of all we have our frag plugs. Next we have our cyanoacrylate super glue gel, corals coral glue. Then we've got a razor blade. We have bone cutters. We have our wet band saw that I'm actually probably not going to use today. Um, however, this can be a good tool if the rock is really hard to break or as a last resort. And then I have this little reservoir of salt water that I'll explain what this is used for in a minute. All right, I just grabbed the coral out of the tank and I put it in our little cup down here. Um, this will help it, it, this makes it a lot easier for us to um, have easy access to the coral and keep it in the water as much as possible. It, I recommend making sure these can stay in the water as much as they can. Um, you can get them, they can be out of the water for up to 30 minutes safely, but the more time out of the water, the more stressed out the coral is going to get. So before I get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about palytoxin. So zoanthids have a toxin in them called palytoxin. It's one of the most powerful toxins in the world. And that's part of the reason why I'm wearing gloves today. Um, I have these safety goggles that I don't actually normally wear, although I do recommend wearing them. And, uh, but I have my glasses that kind of protect my eyes for, for me. Um, so palytoxin is something you don't want to get in your eyes or your nose or your mouth. Um, you want to wash your hands after you handle corals or especially zoanthids. Um, and especially when you're fragging them and cutting them, stressing them out, they may release that toxin. So I have done this for about 16 years and um, I haven't had any issues with palytoxin before. And so I really don't think it's something to be super nervous or scared about, but it is something to be aware of and that you want to take the right precautions so that it doesn't, you don't get hurt. All right, I'm going to take the coral out of the container now. So this zoanthid has three polyps. So this is the main polyp. There's these two polyps on the side. So especially with stratosphere zoas, um, they seem to be difficult to frag. They don't like being fragged. Um, one trick that people have found is that if you frag them, when they just have these new little baby polyps, they're more likely to survive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my razor blade and I'm going to cut right in between those two polyps, the connective tissue in between the main polyp and the baby polyp. And then I'll take my bone cutters and I'll chip whatever rock I need to chip to separate them after the flesh is cut with the razor blade. And then after that, I'll re-glue that new polyp onto its own frag plug. So here we go. Grab the razor blade and I'm going to dip the razor blade in some salt water before I use it. Now I'm going to just get it right in between those two polyps and just try to make a really clean, complete slice. And this one actually I think I felt that it just kind of separated on its own. So I may not even need my bone cutters on this one. I just need to, I'm going to use the back end of my razor blade now to try to separate these a little more. And then I didn't get the flesh cut all the way. So ideally you try to get the flesh cut all the way the first time so you don't make too many incisions. But there we go. I got it. There was no need for bone cutters because it's just on this little piece of rock. So now I'm going to take this zoanthid and I'm going to get it on the frag plug. I usually pre-prep my frag plugs with glue, but I didn't this time. So I'm just going to put a good dab of glue on here. And then I can put the zoanthid on there. And then I will go put it back in the water. I recommend putting it as close to the same place in the water as you can. Um, also, if you're fragging multiple polyps at once, you can put it in your little container so that you can uh, keep that guy in the water. And then I would also recommend 
putting the weather colony back in there in the water and if you're not working with it and then uh, those guys can stay happy until you're ready to put them back in the tank. We're going to grab this other zoanthid frag out of the water. Um, I like to try to make sure they can close so sometimes I'll kind of shake them in the water or I'll just bring them in and out of the water a little bit. Um, that will help you work with them a little easier and it will protect the polyps from getting bruises, getting bruises on them um, during fragging. Sometimes they don't frag all the way, so you just do the best you can, or they don't close up all the way, and so you just do kind of the best you can. But these guys are looking decent now. They're not all the way closed, but that's easy enough to work with. So I'm going to show you guys um, how to do it with the razor blade and the bone cutters on this frag. This is an utter chaos frag is what these zoanthids are called. They're a really beautiful classic zoa. And while I do that, I'm going to talk about an experience that I had with uh, one of my new employees a while ago that was fragging zoanthids and it was really cool to see the difference of um, the two methods of fragging. So first I'm going to cut right here. That polyp's connected with a little bit of tissue and I'm going to cut right here. It also helps if you kind of score the rock with your razor. That'll help you when you're cutting it later. And then I'll grab my bone cutters. And when I do this, I'm going to put them in this little tub of water. Uh, a couple reasons for that. Firstly, I um, have had times that I cut this out of the water. And if you're cutting a little tiny piece off, there's a lot of pressure. And that will sometimes make that little rock fly. And that is not good because um, you'll lose it. And uh, I've done that with some pretty expensive polyps before. And it is not fun. I was on the floor combing through my carpet trying to find... Um, the polyp and there was times I never found it and so I'm just going to grab the uh, rock with my bone cutters where I want to cut it and then I'll put them in the water and I will just put some pressure on to break it then I'll take them out and see how it broke so that did a pretty good job at cutting almost both of those polyps off that I was wanting to cut so I can do this little thing I'm holding the rock with both pieces now so nothing can fly away and let me cut it. There we go. And I'm going to cut that, those two in half. I'm going to do that in the water. And then I will cut um, these four polyps here. I'm going to make two two polyp frags. So I'm going to grab my razor blade. I use the back of the razor to kind of move the polyps around so that I can see where they're connected and where's the best place to cut. So for these guys, I'm actually going to cut these right here. And then these two are actually kind of on their own right there, so I don't actually have to cut those. So now I'll take my bone cutters again and just place them right there and snip. And that actually went perfectly. So. I'm going to have this as my mother colony to grow back out again. I'll glue that onto a big frag disc. And then the rest of those, I believe we have four frags. So I'm going to put four dots of glue. One, two, three, four. And then I'm just going to glue these on. Just set them right there. There's number one. There's number two. There's number three. And here's number four. So now I'm going to take those. I'm going to put them in between my fingers so that I can carry all four of them at once. And then we're going to put them back in the tank that they were in and get them used to let them heal. I wanted to show you guys um, the wrong way to frag zoanthids that a lot of people try to, to do. And it's not actually a good way to do it. It results in a lot of... Um, loss and what people will do so zoanthids are a soft coral so they don't have any skeleton it's just the soft tissue that connects to the rock so some people will take their razor blade and they'll try to scrape underneath that tissue and take the whole polyp off of the rock and then they'll glue that polyp down and that in my experience is not a very good way to frag zoanthids i just wanted to finish my story that i started earlier while i was fragging the zoas about my employee who was fragging them the wrong way and what happened with that. So I knew that she had some experience fragging before I hired her. So she came on and I just let her start doing her thing. And I realized after she started that she was fragging them 
the way that causes a lot more loss in zoas. And so what she was doing is she was scraping the bottom and taking the whole zoanthid off of the rock and then gluing that onto the frag plug. And so she had done that. There was a big zoa colony. She was fragging. She'd done that with quite a few of the frags. And then I noticed and I showed her the way to do it with the razor blade and with chipping a piece of the rock off. And then she started doing it that way. And it was really cool to see the difference because it was the same zoa colony, the same person fragging, the same everything. And all the only difference was that I taught her that technique. And she had like 10 frags that she made, scraping them all the way off the rock and then gluing them. And then she had 10 frags that she made, chipping the little piece of rock and just cutting the connective tissue with a razor blade. And the ones that she chipped the little piece of rock that she did the right way was they started opening within about an hour and they, um, they all survived. They all did great and um, I could sell them the next day if I wanted to. The ones that she had scraped off completely and then glued, about half of them died over the next couple of days and the rest of them that survived took about a week to heal and start opening up and looking okay. And it, I really wasn't comfortable selling those for another two or three weeks. Thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what video you'd like to see next.